In today's video, we will look at the B-24 Liberator, an American heavy bomber. The B-24 is a long-range heavy bomber used during World War II by the U.S. and the Allied Air Forces. It was designed by the Consolidated Aircraft Company. It is powered by four air-cooled radial engines and had a spacious box-like fuselage slung beneath a high wing, a tricycle landing gear, and a twin-tail assembly. The B-24 was the mainstay of the U.S. strategic bombing campaign in the Western European theater during World War II. At approximately 18,500 units, it holds records as the world's most produced bomber, heavy bomber, multi-engine aircraft, and American military aircraft in history. The spacious, slab-sided fuselage was built around two central bomb bays that could accommodate up to 3,600 kilograms of ordnance in each compartment. The spacious fuselage earned the aircraft its nickname, Flying Boxcar. The B-24 bomber is 20.47 meters long and 5.49 meters high. The wingspan reaches 33.53 meters, and the wing area is 97.4 square meters, which can increase the fuel load and improve the stability of the aircraft at low speed. The B-24 has a highly efficient shoulder-mounted Davis wing, with high aspect ratio. The wing gives the Liberator a high cruise speed, long range and the ability to carry a heavy bomb load. The Davis wing is also more susceptible to ice formation, causing distortion of the aerofoil section and resulting in the loss of lift. The tailplane features two large oval vertical stabilizers mounted at the ends of a rectangular horizontal stabilizer. The wing carries four supercharged radial engines mounted in cowlings borrowed from the PBY Catalina, turning three bladed variable pitch propellers. The B-24 bomber is armed with up to 10 12.7mm M2 Browning machine guns, located in turrets and waste gun positions. There are two machine guns in the nose turret. Here is the location of the bombardier and the navigator. This location is actually considered more dangerous than the others due to the likeliness of flak from enemy guns. The dorsal turret gunner position is behind the cockpit. This position is manned by the flight engineer and has the best defensive vantage point compared to the other gunner positions. The bomb bay compartments are split longitudinally with a centerline catwalk just 23 centimeters wide. It is divided into front and rear parts by the wing spar, and four ammunition racks are installed to mount 20 to 200 kilograms bombs. In later World War II, the bomb bay can be modified with the change of combat missions. The front bomb bay can be equipped with independent fuel tanks to increase the range, and cameras can be installed to perform high-altitude reconnaissance missions, and even carry airborne troops and perform airborne missions. This is the ball turret. The smallest crew member is usually assigned this position. The ball turret can be retracted into the fuselage during takeoff and landing. There is not enough space for the gunner to wear a parachute. The ball turret houses two 50 caliber machine guns. The associated ammunition fed down from boxes mounted on either side of the hoist. The whole unit is suspended on a gimbal with the central tube of the structure attached to the ceiling of the fuselage. The ball hinged on the frame on each side of the guns while the yoke of the gimbal pivoted, giving the turret free movement horizontally. The gunner entered the ball turret through a hatch from inside the aircraft by having the turret rotated until the door opening faced the interior of the aircraft. Inside the ball was an optical gun sight, a breathing oxygen regulator, and the gun turret controls. The gunner was forced to assume a fetal position within the turret. The turret is driven by hydraulic motors operated by controls near the gunner's head, with a full 360 degrees of horizontal motion and 90 degrees of vertical motion. An optical gun sight hung in front of the gunner's face. The gunner would hold these handles above his head, turning the turret up and down. A firing button located at the end of each handle would fire both guns. This is the waste gunner position. There is a gunner on either side of the bomber, defending against attacks from the flank. The tail gunner is tasked to guard the bomber 6 o'clock position. On the left you will see all the oxygen indicators and gauges, and on the right you will see the audio pin. The defensive armament varies much among different versions.
The B-24 employs an unusual four-panel set of all-metal, roller-type, bomb bay doors, which can be retracted into the fuselage. They works very much like the movable enclosure of a roll-top desk. This creates a minimum of aerodynamic drag to keep speed high over the target area, and also allows the bomb bays to be opened while on the ground. The low ground clearance prevents the use of normal bomb bay doors. The Liberator carries a crew of up to 10. The pilot and co-pilot sit alongside each other in the cockpit. The navigator and bombardier, who could also double as a nose gunner, sit in the nose. The radio operator sits behind the pilots, facing sideways. The upper gun turret is located just behind the cockpit, in front of the wing, and is operated by the flight engineer, who sits near the radio operator behind the pilots. In the tail, up to four crew could be located in the waist, operating waist guns, in a retractable ball turret and in a tail gun turret. In each mission, the pilot flies the bomber to the battlefield according to the predetermined route, and opens the bomb bay door when appropriate. The navigator observes the target area through the gun sight. Information such as speed and angle determines the timing of the bombing, and the bomber pulls the bombing lever to drop the bomb. After checking the damage, they will inform the follow-up fleet through the radio operator whether the mission has been completed, or a certain area should be bombed again. The B-24 was used extensively in World War II. It served in every branch of the American Armed Forces as well as several Allied Air Forces and Navies. My name is Claytap. We create 3D animations on various topics. Go ahead subscribe this channel for lots more animations just like this one.